Windy Story. Maybe you have never had a chance to visit the famous Balthazar Wheel, a city where the world's most celebrated scientist and inventor, the unsurpassed Professor Balthazar, has lived and worked for a long time. If that is so, we invite you to this story. What is happening in the city today? There isn't even a whisper of wind in Balthazar Wheel. One can hardly breathe, let alone throw paper planes through a school window. People sweat in the streets and can hardly move. Birds don't fly and flags are sagging sadly. The Grand Kite Festival, the World Championship of Kite Flying, simply couldn't take place without any wind. Balthazarians are greatly worried and scared. They can't believe that the wind has left their fair city forever. Not even their grandfathers and grand-grandfathers remember such a thing ever happening. Not even a trace of wind. It's unbearable. What has happened? Who can explain that unusual natural phenomenon? No one. Professor Balthazar was also puzzled by that strange weather phenomenon and couldn't understand what caused it. He sweated like the rest of citizens, walked around, hoped that wind would suddenly begin to blow. But wind was nowhere to be seen. And then, one morning, hats began to fall on Balthazar wheel. It was a rain of hats of every color, style and shape that simply poured over the city and its inhabitants. Hats soon covered all the streets and roofs in the city. Professor Balthazar collected them, studied them, looked at them and suddenly realized how he is going to get rid of them. He was the only person who could have thought of that. He sent boxfuls of cats by ship to the faraway Australia. All the kangaroos on the smallest continent were delighted. Before that, they were all bareheaded and those cats were, made them really, really happy. Now they could jump as high as they wanted without fear of catching the cold in the higher atmosphere. Meanwhile, Balthazar Will had a new problem. An even stranger rain fell this time. Out of the clear blue skies came the outpouring of colorful umbrellas. Professor Balthazar had another brilliant idea. He sent all the umbrellas to the penguins on the North Pole. The penguins were delighted by that gift. They used to be very bored, but now they had an ice jump and started having non-stop competitions in parambrella shooting. But those who thought that they saw the last of the peculiar rains were wrong. On the third day, at high noon, Balthazar will saw a hailstorm of letters. Professor Balthazar was desperate. Nobody knew what to do with so many correspondences. Luckily, around two o'clock, a postman fell out of the sky. He told them what was really happening. Professor Balthazar decided to go to a neighboring town to see if they had such unusual happenings and if there was any wind there. The worried Balthazarians gave him a delighted send-off, hoping that he would soon solve the riddle. What happened next was exactly what Professor thought was going to happen. A strong gust of wind suddenly, angrily picked him up and it turned him back to Balthazar Will. While his fellow citizen despaired, thinking that all was lost, Professor was happy to have finally realized what the matter was. Wind gathered in the neighboring city. Having learned the cause of all the unusual things that were happening in his city, Professor immediately started looking for a solution. He activated his Hurley Burlitron, an electronic problem-solving machine. Out of the machine dripped his latest invention. It was an unusual invention, a machine called Windmobile. It was fueled by wind, but most importantly, didn't go downwind, but upwind. Professor Balthazar sat in his vehicle, they gave him a little push, and he was suddenly off. In the neighboring town, the wind was really tyrannizing and fuming, carrying everything in its path and enjoying its imminence power. 
but our Professor Balthazar had his own powerful weapon he carried in a little bottle, a mysterious drop that came out of the hurly burly trunk. As soon as he arrived in Windwill, he threw down a heavy anchor, took out the bottle and let the drop drip. Out of that drop immediately sprang a windmill like the world had never seen before. It was the ultimate mill and also a pump for collecting, sucking in and taming the most vicious, most dangerous and most cheeky wind that ever did sweep the land. Behold no less than the first and strongest windsucker in the world. All Professor Balthazar's inventions were multi-purpose, so that windmill didn't just suck in the wind, it also put it in the bottles and loaded them on a wind-powered train. The first wind train set for Balthazarville with its precious cargo. Not only that the citizens of Balthazarville could freely breathe and enjoy the fresh air, they now also had fantastic fuel like no other. Bottled wind could puff off the sailboat sails better than any gale or even squall. Anybody could buy a bottle of wind and use it as they saw fit. Wind, thanks to the professor, became, after steam, gasoline and atomic energy, the most powerful fuel in the world. All the important flags in Balthazarville once again started flapping in the wind. People could once again breathe a lungful of air. And finally, the world championship in paper kite flighting could take place after all. Here we are at the end of the story. But let us ask you something. Who do you think won the competition? You must have guessed. The ingenious Professor Balthazar. He knew best how to use the strong wind power and his kite never came down from those heavenly heights. The end.